I hope that works. It's the first time I've used this machine. Anyway, is it able to record on that? So yeah, so anyway, I think that's, um, I think that's a really, I mean, a very, very interesting topic. And I think quite a few people in the class actually are looking at that kind of thing, right? Um, and uh, you'll also find that, you know, there's particularly the focus on first language, right? In recent years, um, there's been much more of a focus on that. Um, so, you know, a guy called Guy Cook, right? Wrote a book about translation, right? So translation became more fashionable. And there's also something called uh, translanguaging. Let me just, hang on, let me just go in here for a second. Um, where are we? This one here. Great. Um, Guy Cook, right? I think that's right. And he, uh, he wrote about translation, right? Um, in second language acquisition. Oops, that's not good. Acquisition. Um, and there's also, and I think a big thing that's come out recently is what's called translanguaging, uh, which is really about um, kind of use of multiple languages. in language learning yeah and so you know the I mean, if you use multiple languages in language that means like for example Japanese um, students would use Japanese yeah you'd use Japanese in the classroom as part of that learning process yeah subtitles and stuff like that right so Japanese subtitles um, and so that's that's become a very big fashionable topic right so it's people are starting now to look at first language, right? And I think that basically to explain mistakes uh, that, that students make, um, probably first language is the key, yeah? So why, why would it be true that you can explain mistakes, right? You can explain mistakes by looking at first language. Why, why would that be, why would that maybe, maybe true? You know, so like for example, we can, maybe we can explain, right? Maybe we can explain um, second language mistakes. Oops. By looking at first language. Okay. Is that coming out? Um, so I think you know maybe that maybe that's possible, right? Now it's like the question would be why. Yeah. Why would first language, like Japanese, right? what well, the structure of Japanese, why might that help you to understand the mistakes that second language learners are making? So if you're learning English, right, uh, and you hear the mistakes and you think, oh, that's because Japanese is like this. Any ideas? Because it's not, it's not really, it's not really obvious, right? I mean, you think, well, why is that? And it's like, uh, I'm not sure, why would that be, right? And it's like one possibility, maybe, right? Is that there's only one
linguistic system. Yeah. Although there's just, there's just one linguistic system, so it's like, you know, there's not like multiple linguistic systems. There's not one linguistic system for English and one linguistic system for Japanese and one linguistic system for other languages that you learn. It's just one linguistic system. Yeah. And so, for example, if you learn a word like, um, I don't know, uh, think of a word. Uh, let's say, for example, eat. Yeah. Say you learn the word eat. How do you learn that word as a, as a Japanese native speaker? Mm. To me, firstly, I learn the Japanese meanings of eat, firstly. Yeah. And... Mm, so, when I have to translate taberu, the yeah. meaning of eat, right. you have to think Japanese words firstly, and next translate the word taberu into English eat. Yeah. Exactly, English. that's one thing, right? And it's like, that, and that, and to say that, it seems quite simple, right? And it seems quite obvious, yeah? You say, basically, you're saying something like, um, I don't know, you say, start off with taberu, yeah? And then basically, sort of do something like, well, what am I doing here? Oh, I didn't want to do that. Anyway, I suppose that's good enough, right? It's like, taberu equals eat. Yeah? Taberu equals eat, right? And so if you do that, and it's like the thing is, I think that's, that, that makes sense, right? That's common sense, right? It's almost like you don't even have to say it, yeah? Yeah? It's so obvious, yeah? But the problem is, it's been ignored. Right? The obvious thing, right? The most obvious thing. Nobody could possibly really deny that, right? that that's what happens. And yet in second language acquisition and in first language acquisition actually, that is, that is completely ignored, right? In other words, the, the, the key to second language learning is first language, right? You're building on the first language, right? And you, and you think, well, why do you build on the first language? Because you have to build on the first language because there's only one linguistic system. Yeah? So then you're thinking, wow, that's kind of like, you know, that's pretty amazing. Um, and you think, well, a lot of that is really obvious, right? Nobody's going nobody's to deny that. And yet, first language largely has been completely ignored in second language acquisition for 50, 60 years. Yeah. And so basically it's like, it's kind of exciting because it's like the most important thing, right? the most important thing is being completely ignored for 50 or 60 years. Right. So that means, you know, it's like, um, there's lots of room for research. Yeah. There's a need for research. And uh, there's lots of room for it. So let's say, for example, you say that you start off with the idea that taberu equals eat, right? So what does that mean, actually? If you say taberu equals eat, what, what, does, that, what does that mean? So if you say, for example, taberu equals eat, what do you then know about eat? I mean, say for example, if you're going to talk about, say for example, sound, grammar, meaning. Yeah? Sound, grammar, and meaning. So if you say, for example, the sound of the English word and the sound of the Japanese word, what do you say about it? Is it the same or different? Very different. 
right? It's very different, right? So you go eat and tabedu, right? <laughs> right? So even you know, the sounds are really kind of very, very different because it's different kind of sounds even, right? So the sound is, um, the sound is very different. Yeah, we can say that, right? Um, what about the grammar? Is it very different? Yeah, why? So, so for, say for example, say you're learning a language, right? And you're learning a language and you say, okay, what's the word for, and you don't know anything, right, about English, right? Say so you know nothing at all about English. And then somebody says to you, or you say to somebody, what's, what's the um, English word for tabiru, right? And they say, it's eat, right? Eat, right? Now, if, at that point, when somebody says it's eat, what are you going to do about the grammar? Yeah, yeah. But if you only know one word, just the word, right? You haven't looked at a sentence, right? You just, just have the word, right? Somebody just says to you, you say to somebody, what's, what's, what's tabiru in English? And they say it's eat, right? And that's the only thing you know, yeah? You haven't seen a sentence, right? You have never seen a sentence in English, right? The only thing you know is that eat, it, eat means tabiru, basically, right? Eat is the English word for tabiru. So what do you know about the grammar? Nothing. <laughs> hmm? Nothing. Nothing, right? Nothing, but is that true, right? Is it true that you know nothing, yeah? Is it really true that you know nothing? Because you know, right, that eat is tabiru, right? Eat equals tabiru. So you must know something about it. I mean, what's tabiru, grammatically? Verb. A verb, right? Yeah. Yeah? So grammar is going to be something like, you know, probably it's a verb, right? Now, what do you know, right? What do you know about verbs, right? The verb eat in Japanese, tabiru. What do you know about that verb? Yes. Yes, it comes, the verb comes after the, after the subject, yeah? Um, it's a verb, the, um, it comes after, after the subject, before the object, isn't it? Yes, and you'll type it, yes, yes. Um, before the object, yeah. So, in other words, you know that you have a subject, yeah? And you know that you have an object, yeah? And at this point, with the, all, all you know, the only thing you know is that eat equals tabiru, right? You don't know in English where the object is, and you don't know where the subject is, right? But you do know that it's a verb, yeah? You know that it's a verb, and you're thinking, Probably there's a subject and there's an object. Yeah? Probably there's a subject and there's an object. Right? And say, for example, so that's the only thing you know, you just know one word, eat, right? It's probably got a subject, probably got an object. Is that true? It's true, right? It's true. So, in other words, if somebody tells you one word, right? And you say, okay, that's a verb. Right? And it's probably got a subject, it's probably got an object, because that's what verbs have. The, the, this verb anyway, right? Tabiru has a, ver has a subject and object. English, English verb is probably going to be the same. Yeah, basically the same. And maybe you're thinking, okay, it's going to be the same as Japanese, right? In other words, the, um, the subject is going to be first, and then the object is going to come before the verb, right? If you don't know anything about English, then probably you assume that. Yeah, he's just going to say, "Okay, I don't. I, or I don't. That's all I know, right? That's all I know about the uh, about the English language. It's one word, right? I don't know where the object comes. I don't know where the subject comes. That's just that's the only thing I know. Yeah, but it's like you make that assumption, right? 
And quite a lot of that assumption is correct. Yeah? Just on the basis of one word, right? You've made some assumptions, many of which are correct, right? So in other words, the subject does come before the, the, the verb, right? And, um, you know, so that's, and, and it's a verb. It works like a verb. There is a subject, there is an object, it's a verb. Um, and the subject coming before the verb, that's all correct. Yeah? Now, the thing that's not correct, right, is that the object actually comes after the verb in English. Yeah? That's not correct. But, uh, you know, just stay with that. What about the meaning? Same. Yeah? Yeah? The meaning, right, is actually the same. Yeah? It's the same meaning. Now, is that, that's the best assumption you would make. Is that assumption correct? Yes. Yeah? It's, <laughs> right? It seems, right? It seems as if you make this assumption that the meaning of the verb eat and the meaning of the verb taberu is basically the same. Yeah? And probably you never have to change that assumption. Yeah? You can probably stick with that assumption for the rest of your life. Yeah? So in other words, you got from this, just this, you know only one word, right? You only, only know one word if you've got one linguistic system, right? And by saying, just saying that eat and tabiru are the same, right? They're the same thing, right? Then you know, in fact, the, the meaning is the same, right? The meaning is the same. The sound is very different, right? But the grammar is kind of similar, yeah? The grammar is kind of similar, and the meaning is actually exactly the same, yeah? And then, say, if, you know, assumptions about the grammar, for example, that the, the subject comes before the verb, that's also correct, yeah? And you never have to change it, yeah? So, in other words, when you start to look at it this way, right, you think, okay, People are always talking about interference, right? Interference, interference, interference. That the, the, the first language is, is making it difficult to learn the second language, right? That's a big sort of, that's a big idea in second language acquisition, right? The first language is gonna be like a problem, right? Um, and you should really focus on English, on, on, on the second language only, right? And uh, forget about first language. Right? Because the first language is actually going to interfere, right? Make it difficult to learn the second language. But if you look at it this way, you think, well, hang on, maybe there's only one system, right? There's only one linguistic system. We just have that one linguistic system. And we say that word equals that word. We know certainly the sound is different, right? But the grammar is actually similar, yeah? There are similarities. And in fact, the meaning is, in many cases, exactly the same. Yeah? So when you look at it that way, you can see that in fact, first language is really helping you to learn the first language, so second language rather, in very big ways. Because there's all these things that come like at the same time, right? As soon as you learn that one word, all these things come with it. The meaning, the structure, you know, the way the grammar operates. It comes without any problem. Yeah? So that would be something like, um, you know, a word like, a verb like taberu. Yeah? So that sort of, a lot of that is kind of simple. So let me just get that out for a moment. Let's come, come up with another example. What about um, a preposition? Tomohiro, any, any examples of prepositions you'd like to focus on? 
For example, on. 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 Yeah. On. By. Yeah. So, for example, if, if you use that same um, kind of analogy as before, um, on, right? What would be the Japanese then for that? How would you learn it? Mm. Ue. No, ue. Ue. Yeah? So, for example, if you say, for example, I don't on, let's say equals ue ni. Yeah? That's it. Yeah? Like that. Yeah? Okay, so that would be your first assumption. Right? Now, if you say you say, if you say, say you know nothing else, right? You know no other words. Okay, it's the only word you know, or the you know, only expression you know is on, right? Um, then what does that teach you about on? About the grammar, about the uh, sound and the grammar and the meaning. So certainly, I mean, you say first of all, I suppose you could say that um, the sound is different. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What about the grammar? <laughs> Different, yeah, why? Yeah. Right. Right. So it's like, yeah, I mean, the, the idea is uh, the prep, prep is a preposition in English, like on the table, right? But it's actually a post position in Japanese. Yeah. So, in other words, the you know that's 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 very different in that sense, yeah. But when you learn, if this is the only word you know, right? The only word you know, it's like you don't know that yet, yeah. So you don't know that it's actually the other way around, yeah. Um, but I mean that's an important point, yeah. What about anything else? Is, is it similar? Grammar is similar. Ueni and on. Table no any on the table similar, yeah. So I suppose in this case it would be like what not any is it? Maybe yeah, I don't know. So grammar, let's say it's I don't know. Let's say it's similar. Yeah. Okay, grammar is similar. Uh, we could say it's probably going to be the same kind of thing. As you say, we, we, we discovered that at some point that um, the English is a preposition, right? Maybe I should write that down. So the English has, English is rep preposition, is a preposition, and Japanese is a, is, is a post position. Yeah? Because it comes after the thing, so table and not any rather than on the table. Yeah. Um, so that is actually, you know, something you discover later. Yeah. But otherwise, maybe the uh, the grammar is fairly similar. Yeah. Fairly similar. Yeah. Not so different, maybe. Now, we talked about this a little bit last week, and this relates to the verb, right? You said the verb is uh, a tabiru, the, the object comes after the verb in English, but it comes before the verb in Japanese, yeah? Um, and in, the, in the, these prepositions, it's a preposition in English, right? So it comes before the object, 
Yeah? And again, in Japanese, the object comes before, right? And the, 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 prep, the post position comes after the object. So it's a similar kind of pattern. Yeah? Now, we mentioned last week that, you know, that's a very big, that seems like a very big difference. Yeah? Seems like a very big difference. But it also seems that Japanese speakers never make a mistake. Yeah? So Japanese speakers, Japanese learners of English, never say, I, the hamburger, ate. Right? Talking about mistakes, typical mistakes. Yeah? Um, you'd think that the, because this is, a big, this is a big difference, right? Um, you'd think that Japanese speakers would make that mistake a lot. Yeah? But in fact, they never make that mistake. Yeah? And what about prepositions? Would, would Japanese students say, um, the book, the table on? No, yeah? Not really, I don't think so, yeah? So that wouldn't be, that's not a typical mistake. Yeah, I've never heard that, yeah? that people would say the book is on the table, the book on the table, right? On the table, right? So in other words, Japanese people don't make that mistake. Yeah? Why don't they make that mistake? Tomohiro, why don't they make that mistake? Why? Yeah. I mean, prepositions, right? I mean, you're saying the prepositions are diff difficult, yeah? Yeah. Difficult. And if you look at the grammar, right? Look at the grammar of preposition. It seems like that is a big difference. Right? One is a preposition, one is a postposition. Yeah? It's the opposite. Before and after, right? That's about the biggest difference you can get, right? It's opposite. Yeah? So why don't people make a mistake? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's so kind of interesting, right? And then like, you think, well, okay, so but that's, that's a really big mistake, right? I'm sorry, big difference, and yet people don't make a mistake. That's, so you know, that kind of needs an explanation, right? Verbs, they don't make mistakes with the order of verbs. They don't make mistakes with the order of prepositions. Prepositions are very diff difficult, right? But that's for another reason, yeah? It's not because of the order, right? It's not because of the order, there's something else. They never make a mistake with the order. So why don't they make a mistake with the order? So that's, that's a really big question, yeah? That's a really big question and nobody's explained it, yeah? It's like, I mean, I think, the, I think in second language acquisition, people have noticed that, say, Japanese people don't make mistakes with order of words. Yeah, word order isn't a problem. Even though they're big differences, fundamental differences, before the verb, after the verb before the preposition, after the preposition, or postposition, yeah? Big difference, but no mistakes. And that's not really explained, right? People have noticed it, but it's not really explained. So how do you explain it? One way to explain it, I think, is to say, okay, it's a big difference, but it's easy to explain and easy to understand. Yeah? It's like your teacher just says, be careful, the verb comes before the object in English. Yeah? And you, the teacher says that, the student goes, okay, no problem, easy to understand. Yeah? And then after that, when the student is studying, in just about every sentence, yeah, the student sees examples. Yeah? 
the student will see examples where the, where the object is always after the verb. The object is always after the verb. Nearly every sentence. Yeah? And because it's easy to understand, and then they see it again and again and again, they use it again and again and again when they're studying, it's no problem. And nobody ever makes a mistake. Yeah? It's easy to understand, get lots of practice, no problem. Yeah? So it's something like, I mean, oh, hang on, what am I doing? Just get rid of that for a second. Get rid of the whole thing. So you could say something like, um, think, if it's easy to understand, easy to understand, easy to explain, yeah? And get adequate practice, then there's no problem, yeah? So even though it's a big difference, it's a fundamental difference in language, because it's easy to understand, and because the students get lots of practice with it, they see examples all the time, and there's no problem. Yeah? So verbs coming before or after the object, or prepositions coming before or after the object, again, it's easy to understand. Students probably see prepositions coming before the object in English, they see it again and again, and nobody makes a mistake. Yeah? So why are prepositions difficult? What's difficult about prepositions? Meaning. Yeah, the meaning is, is much more complicated, right? Now, for example, first of all, you're going to start with, I mean, say if you get meaning, right? Um, now, if the, only, if the only thing you know in the language is one word, right, on, right? That's the only thing you know. You, you, know, you know that the, um, the sound is very different. You're going to, probably going to assume that the grammar is similar, yeah? Is, is the same, but then the teacher explains to you, no, it isn't, right? <laughs> it's actually kind of the opposite direction, but it's easy to understand. You practice it, no problem. But then you're going to assume that the meaning is actually the same, right? You're going to make that, if you don't know anything else, you're going to assume that the meaning is the same, yeah? Is it? Right. Yeah. Right, is not the same, yeah? In other words, the, the meaning, right? The meaning of, um, of on doesn't equal no ueni in all cases, right? Um, so meaning is a serious problem here, right? Yeah? Meaning causes a serious problem because as you say, on the wall, yeah, that's right. So on the wall, even if on Monday, right? Um, anything else? On time, yeah, that sort of thing, right? So in other words, the meaning, the, the meaning of the um, of the, um, the the words on, right, and the way that it's actually used is is very complicated. Yeah, it's much more complicated. It's not easy to explain. Yeah. And um, you probably don't see, you know, so many examples, right? And even if you see the example to actually sort of process it, right, to understand it and bring it inside, probably takes a long time, yeah? And I think, uh, and I think also the, the idea of meanings, to actually get meaning, right, to understand the meaning of something, right, is much more complicated. Right? It's a far bigger problem. Um, you know, a teacher can say, okay, the, the verb comes before the verb in English, uh, before the object in English. Yeah? So be careful. And you practice it, you got it, no problem. Right? Um, but then meaning is a much more complicated thing. Yeah? Now, how do you learn meaning? 
right? So for example, a native speaker knows that you say on the wall, it's on the wall, you say it's on Monday or it's on time, yeah? What is that meaning in, in for a native speaker? And how did the native speaker learn it, right? Because the native speakers, nobody is saying, right? Oh, this is, this means that, right? And so you say this and that, and this, right? So how does a native speaker learn it? How do you learn meaning? It's a big question. <laughs> I think these are really difficult questions, right? Any ideas, guys? How do you learn meaning? How do you? Or how do we, should we say, learn meaning? How about that? you could just say, you know, you just pick it up, right? While you're living. Yeah? I mean, that's kind of a simple way of saying it, right? You know, you just pick it up, right? How do you learn it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, right? I don't know how I learn it, just pick it up, right? Just pick it up as you learn, as you're living, right? And I suppose you, another way of saying you say it's um, in cultural activity. Yeah. It's like wh while you're actually, you know, living in your culture, right? Whereas you're participating, right? As you're participating, taking part, yeah? Taking part in uh, cultural activity. And uh, then you just, you just pick up meaning. Yeah, and actually that is kind of the idea with um, what they call sociocultural theory. Yeah, um, that, and this is from a guy called Vygotsky. Yeah. Uh, the idea is that your, your all mental development, right, all your learning, in other words, everything you learn, right, takes place in cultural activity. Yeah, it all takes place in, in cultural activity. So for example, you'd say sort of all learning, all mental development is what he actually says, right? Takes place in cultural activity. Yeah, so it all does. So it's like, in other words, the cultural activity that you, that as a native speaker, right? There's certain cultural activities you're engaged in as a native speaker, learning your first language, yeah? And then there's different kind of cultural activity you're engaged in learning your second language, yeah? How are they different? I mean, if you're learning a second language, for example, how do you, how do you learn the meaning of on, for example, as in on the table? Right, it's a translation process, yeah? The teacher just tells you, right? The teacher just tells you that this is that, right? This is that, <laughs> right? And it's like there's this translation pro process and you just say that word equals that word, yeah? And then you kind of work on that basis, yeah? So it's a very different kind of, it's a very different, and you have to do that, 
because there's only one linguistic system, right? You can't, you can't help it, right? You have to, right? Somebody says, taberu is e equals eat, then you basically say, okay, that's the, it, I translate to that. That means the grammar is probably similar. The sound is very different. The pro gram probably the grammar is similar and probably the meaning is similar. Yeah? And you work on that basis. Yeah? So it's that kind of translation process when you're like in, a, a t in school where the teacher tells you, tells you the, the, what the word means and so on. Yeah? What the word is. Yeah? So in other words, that kind of um, learning process in school is fundamentally a translation process. And very often it's useful. Yeah? It's very often it's very, very useful. And even some big difference is not a problem because it's simple and easy to understand. Right? But then when you come down to meaning, it becomes very difficult sometimes. Yeah? Because the way in which you learned the meaning right, is very different from the way you learn the meaning of the second language. Yeah? So in other words, learning a first language, yeah, you just with your mother, you with your I don't know, brothers and sisters, you're with your friends, you're kind of being just doing normal activities, and over time you pick up the meanings. Yeah? You pick up the meaning. Just pick it up. Right? How do you learn it? We don't really know. It's just a mystery, right? You just pick it up. Yeah, it just happens. Yeah? But then, you know, like in school, it's not that. It's a kind of a, tra it's a translation process. Yeah? And you're using all that learning you've already done, and you're making certain assumptions, right? Say, so this is that, this is that, this is that, probably, right? And sometimes it's very useful and it's correct, right? And sometimes the differences are not a problem. Yeah? But sometimes the differences are a problem. Yeah? where the meaning is very, very diff diff difficult. It's not easy to explain, right? <laughs> right? It's not easy to explain. It's not easy to kind of change your idea of it, yeah? Because it's meaning, right? It's actually meaning. And it's like, if, if you don't know the meaning, it's very difficult to make sense of it, yeah? It's like somebody says, I don't know, shows you, show you a sentence in English, for example. Right? Um, I don't know. So something like, um, let's get rid of this. Let's say, for example, I don't know, um, I arrived uh, on time. Yeah? And you see that, right? Um, as a learner of English. Well, if you don't know the meaning, right? You don't understand it, maybe. Right? You don't understand it. <laughs> if you don't understand it, you probably can't learn it. Yeah, it's gonna be much more difficult to learn. So it's like that, I think that is the key here really, is that, you know, some things are easy, right? The first language is kind of helping you, it's providing you with a structure. You build on the first language, right? You build on the first language, you have to build on the first language because there's only one linguistic, linguistic system. And you use a kind of translation process like the process of translation, say that equals that, that equals that, that equals that. And you make those assumptions. And then sometimes you change the assumption. Some assumptions are easy to change. Yeah? Some things are easy. Because it's easy to understand and you practice it and there's, you know, there's no meaning involved. Right? It's just a straightforward thing, before, after. And you see it again and again. And you've got it, no problem. But some things are meaning, the meaning of things. And, if you, and you pick up meaning in cultural activity over many years, right? Even as a child, right? Even as a child, you're actually engaged in cultural activity with your friends, with your family, right? Over and over again, listening and communicating. And you pick up the meanings. You just pick it up, yeah? Just pick it up. But then when you come to the second language, Right? Then you say, okay, there's a translation. On means no ueni. Right? And you look at this. I arrived on time. Yeah? So then you're a serious problem, right? 
So you're dealing with meanings, right? Where the translation process now has broken down. Yeah? And actually causes problems. And it's like, if you think about, say, the translation process for a verb, like eat, yeah? So you know, you say, okay, the sound is different, but the grammar is similar, yeah? And doesn't really cause a problem, yeah, generally speaking. Um, and the meaning is the same, yeah? Hey, and it is, <laughs> right? The meaning is the same, right? No problem. Yeah? And then you would think, well, okay, so why do prepositions cause a problem? Yeah? Well, because you say, oh, do this tr same translation process. You say, okay, the sound is different, but the grammar is kind of similar. It's a little bit different, but you know, we can, it's not that difficult to understand. But the meaning is really different. Yeah? And depends what you're talking, it depends what you're talking about. Yeah? So really meaningful, the meaning of on and the meaning of ueni is different. Yeah, really is different. And learning meaning is really a problem. Yeah, and sometimes you can do it by translation and sometimes you really can't. Yeah, so Tomohiro, that's what I think, I think that's what it is, right? I think it's like ultimately, right, the problem right, is in cultural learning, yeah? Um, there's a big difference between first language um, cultural learning. Oops, can't do it. Uh, learning, where you're basically just living your life, right? Living your life surrounded by other people. And then second language, yeah, cultural learning, which is also cultural learning, but it's, um, it's a translation process, generally helped, helped by your teacher, yeah? So it's not a really authentic cultural immersion situation, yeah? So I think that's what it is. And um, I think, you know, basically, um, it's easy to understand in those terms, yeah? It's easy to understand why some things are very difficult and some things are very easy. If you're building on, right, you use, it's a kind of translation process where you're building second language on first language, yeah? It explains why some things are difficult, explains why some things are easy. Yeah. And, um, well, yeah, I think that's what it is. And I think n people haven't done the research, right? People really haven't done this research. And I think that's why it's exciting, right? Because it's kind of time now. People are starting to look at, um, people are starting to look at um, first language. Yeah. And people are starting to look at culture, uh, culture and meaning in a much bigger way. So it's time. Right? It's time. We will do it. Yeah? <laughs> we will. So anyway, that's what I think. Um, so Tomohiro, I think it's a really good topic. And it's actually my topic. <laughs> right? it's, actually, it's actually the topic I'm interested in, mostly. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so I think it'll be really good, really good for you to do that. Sound okay to you? Any questions or comments? Tomohiro, is he gone? Uh, no. No? No question, yeah? Do you think that makes sense, sir? Uh, yes. Yeah? I think it's gonna be something like that, right? And the thing is, if, if you think about it, the um, in linguistics, people have been focused on Chomskyan theories, yeah, which is really about uh, universals, right? So people are not really looking at the differences between languages, yeah? Um, and second language acquisition has been influenced by that very strongly. Um, so I think that's why people have ignored, right, the, uh, the place of 
first language in second language acquisition. So I think it's, um, yeah, it's a good topic. So start writing your ideas, yeah? But there's still the question, right? How do you get data? Data. Yeah. How do you get data? Oops, so. How do you get uh, data? I suppose you could say examples, right? About uh, Japanese learners' mistakes in English. How do you get that data? That's the problem, right? Yeah. To analyze the data, yeah, and to actually um, be able to record the kind of mistakes people are making. Anybody? Difficult, eh? So anyway, I think that's what it is. Go think about that, yeah? And see how it goes. Let me just uh, go out here for a second. Oh, hang on. what have I done? Oh, I know. Um, I'll go back in here again. And, okay, here we are. I sent this to uh, Minami before, right? Um, So these are examples of, oh, where is it? Can't find it. Oh, it's up here. Yeah, I got some, I got some really sort of uh, simple examples here. Is this gonna work? Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, it'll do. Yeah, that's okay. Is it gonna work? Ah, sorry. Let me just put that in there. I've got to open it. Yeah, so for example, here you've got, okay, two. There's an A and B, right? There's an A and B. Right, so the student A, student B. So this is student A, right? Okay. And this is, well, and this is student B, right? And the game is, it's a kind of spot, spot the difference game. Yeah. Um, and students have to um, say the sentences and they have to decide if it's the same sentence or different sentence, yeah? So for example, if you're A, number one, how would you, how would you translate that? How would you say that? How do you say number one in English? Come on, speak to me. How do you say number one? Yeah. 
Ya. Slacks? Ya. Yeah. What's the sentence? Yes, sounds pretty good. Yeah. And so the students would say something like that, or the A student would say something like that, right? And the student has to look at um, that. What is it? She. Yeah. Yeah. The subject is different. Yeah. So in other words, what they do is they, they would just like sort of say, okay, uh, they'd listen to that, right? And um, then they say, okay, one A says he likes those striped slacks, right? Or something like that. And then the um, B student says she likes the striped slacks, right? So then they just like circle. Yeah. The difference part, yeah, and um, you can listen to it, right, and you can control what they're saying, yeah. So in other words, you can make it easy, or you can make it more difficult, yeah, and you can listen to it and find out if they're making mistakes, yeah, and it's also a little activity, right. Uh, here, it's easy to do, they just have to hear the he or she, yeah? And they have to be able to hear each other doing that. So that's one example. What about, um, um, here we are. What about number two? What do you say? I mean, just, just say what you think, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to tell you, right? I'm not going to do what it is. Because you, you can find some way to say it, right? So what would you say, probably? Yeah, okay, good, right? So she wants to buy this, 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 yeah, this non-pattern sweater. Yeah, no pattern sweater. You could say plain, right? Yeah, but that doesn't matter, right? So but at the same time, if you're listening to it, you might say, okay, the student doesn't know plain. <laughs> How do you explain that? Well, it's not a very common vocabulary item. Yeah, so people don't know it. It's just simple, right? But then you say, so for example, number two for B, Yes, okay, good, right? So in other words, she wants to buy that plain sweater. Yeah, she wants to buy that plain sweater. So that's the difference, right? So then again, in this case, you just go like, uh, it's gonna be, the difference is gonna be, I can't do it now, what have I done? There, okay. Uh, the difference is gonna be, eh, I can't do it, what have I done? Why is that? Yeah, that's not helpful. Why? Why is it doing that? It's not letting me do it. Oh yeah, got it, okay. Um, so then you just sort of put a circle there, yeah? So it's like a game, yeah? It's like a game, but you can kind of control the language, right? And so then, for example, you could make these examples and maybe you could use lots of prepositions, yeah? and listen to them. So they do, the, they do it, right? They just do it and they, they communicate. And you can find out whether they can use the prepositions properly, yeah? Or you can do other maybe more difficult things like tense and stuff like that, yeah? Um, and then you've got, for example, hang on. Um, let's go to the next one. Oop, I've lost it. 
is it doing? Why is it doing that? It's not working. It's always a bit of a problem, this. Okay, good. Uh, let's find a good one. Um, we could get a different, different example together. So for example, that's one possibility. I've got loads of these examples, right? Um, and then for example, we could go to, sorry. It's nothing to do with you. <laughs> this is the danger, the danger of, ah, oh, what are they doing? Stop it. Okay, okay the danger of showing males, right? Uh, ah! Why? Why are you doing that to me? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, let's see, we got here that, I suppose, isn't it? And then you've got some simple ones. Oh, that's all I've done. What have I done? Can't seem to find it. Okay, I'll go back to these, right? Let's go for it. Let's go the most simple. Um, simplest would be, simplest would be, okay, simplest. There we are. Right, so it's going to be things like this, right? Uh, my name is John against my name is Ron. Yeah, so just yeah, very simple pronunciation exercise, right? Uh, I live in Tokyo. I don't live in Tokyo. Yeah. So again, you can find out if students make that make that mistake, right? So make a mistake with the negative, for example. Yeah, they might say that. Um, he bought a banana, she bought a banana, same thing, right? Um, I saw the, the monkey, uh, I saw the dog, yeah? That sort of thing. So, I mean, that's just simple stuff like that. But it's like you can make it more complicated and you can focus on certain things, yeah? To actually, um, to get students to practice, yeah? So it's a, it's a communicative thing. So, for example, if it's muji, right? Maybe you don't know plain, right? Or you can't remember the words, but you can sort of say something, right? No pattern, and you can find out if it's the same thing. And then you can push the students into saying certain things, yeah? Um, and you can do, um, and you can get data that way, I think. Okay? That'd be one possibility. Anyway, that's that. So, um, oh, hang on. Let me just go out of here for a moment. Time is up. Okay, actually, time is up. Um, close to time is up. So I'll just quickly recap on that. Um, yeah, huh. I'll go in here. So I would say that, you know, if you're thinking about what I mean, but basically, this, the idea is like there's one linguistic system. Um, the, you know, ultimately you've got, you've got one linguistic system, you learn a first language, you've got that first language in there, right? But you, when you learn the first language, you know, the first language is, um, language is learned in, let's say, authentic. Cultural activity. Second language. is learned, um, you know, in schools and stuff, yeah? So it's like, it's, it's not really, a, it's not really a kind of authentic cultural activity. Um, some things are easy to understand, okay? I mean, some, um, I mean, it's a, I think as you said, it's a translation process, yeah? Uh, where you say, this word is that word. Eat is tab tabiru is eat, yeah? On is no way, ni, right? That sort of thing. It's a translation process. Sometimes this is useful. Yeah? Um, and sometimes it's true, right? The eat and taberu do have the same meaning, for example. Yeah? They do have largely the same grammar. And if they don't have the same grammar, it's not a big problem. Yeah? Um, but sometimes. It's a big problem. Yeah. 
And I think it's particularly a big problem, um, to the, the biggest problem, I suppose you could say, um, uh, it surrounds cultural learning of meaning. Yeah. And then again, you have things like the, uh, right? Where these, you can't translate, yeah? You can't really translate. You say, ah, no, but it's not really quite right, right? It doesn't really quite work, right? Um, and then very difficult to explain, incredibly difficult for the teacher to explain. Maybe the teacher doesn't understand it either, yeah? <laughs> right? Maybe the teacher doesn't, right? It's very likely the teacher doesn't understand it either. Yeah? Very, very difficult. And also, it's like, how do you learn that? How does the first language learner learn that? Well, they learn it in authentic cultural activity. And it's easy. Yeah? You're practicing it all the time, you understand what it is because you're actually engaged in the, in the authentic cultural activity. But when, you, when you t you're learning in school, it's not like that. Yeah? And so then to learn those things is very, very difficult. Yeah? And maybe um, it never happens. Right? People go their whole lives. Right? They spend their whole lives unable to understand it. Yeah? Anyway. Yes, I think I'll stop there, guys, for a second. Um, I'll continue with this next week. Yeah, because I think it's um, it's a very um, it's a big topic, and I do I do want people to do this because it's my topic, right? It's actually what I'm interested in. Yeah, those kind of um, explaining those those mistakes. Yeah, and explaining those mistakes and explaining why people don't make some mistakes. Yeah, that's really what is the big, the big issue, I think. Yeah? But anyway, I'll stop there, guys. So uh, thanks very much. I'll see you next time, and we'll continue this topic. Is that okay? Okay, then, guys? Yes, great. Thank you very much. So i'll see you next i'll put this i'll put this up on um I'll put this up on you on youtube thing later so you can check that out okay then guys bye bye say goodbye to the students in the class hey hey bye bye okay there you go